What's up, deep dives and devos? So, you guys, it's Wednesday. It's Real Talk Wednesday, and I am here for the madness. Like seriously, so I got me a little different lighting setup, like going on here. Okay, I'm so happy. Like I am, like seriously, so happy. Um, uh, I got a new ring light, and I got two new ring lights. One for the desk, so you see, I'm getting a little bit brighter. Like, hello, you know what I'm saying? And then I got another one. Amazon babies, Amazon is the place to be. Like you really need to shop there. You can get like all these crazy deals, like all that cool stuff. So the ring light that I'm messing with right now is a desk ring light, which I have here. And this is only $30 on Amazon. Okay. If I remember, I'll definitely post a link for it below, but $30 for this desk light. And it's amazing. I really do like it a lot. Now this little tripod did not come with it. It is my own. This is the first tripod that I started out with on YouTube like 11 years ago on my first channel so I've held on to it but let me tell y'all real quick about this ring light because it does come with two tripods and a mobile stand so I guess I have to go get the mobile stand so that you guys can see everything because there's something really important that I have to tell you guys in case you ever want a ring light like this one for 30 bucks then you can get you one but you got to know the ins and out like you know not the ins and out but I just want to tell you something really important okay okay so it is sturdy it will hold this because this is really lightweight, okay? And it also does come with this tripod right here, which you can definitely open up in. It does get like about the same length and it also comes with this little mobile piece that you can screw on. So in case you want to do like selfies or Instagram or whatever type of videos, you can sit it right in front of the ring light. You want to sit the ring light behind it. So also this does come with like a little remote, which unfortunately I cannot show you because if I do, then I won't be able to control it and keep it on but because it's plugged in but it does come with a little remote that's um attached to the actual cord and it has the power source which is just turn it on and off and then it also comes with three interchangeable lights so if you have like really bad lighting in the background this can correct it somewhat it can help you so as you guys see this is the bright white which you really do need you need this color when you are doing videos and as you guys see it also has controls it has a dimmer on it so you can make it brighter as you guys see me do well i'm doing the wrong one so it does get super duper bright okay and then on top of that i hope i'm not glaring you guys out too much but on top of that, you can change the color settings. So there we have like a rose color and you could just look at my face and tell the difference. And then we have like this yellow color right here. I'm gonna just turn it down a little bit so that way I don't blind you guys with the colors because I want you guys to see. So then it has like this rose color and then it has like the bright white color. So if you guys can see the difference, this is the bright white. Then there's that rosy color and then that's that yellow color so if you have like really bad lighting this will definitely help okay and it's only thirty dollars and it gets really bright so the one thing that i did want to share with you guys that's really important i think you should know prior to purchasing this in case you want to purchase this ring light keep in mind that it has a usb charger so the cord is attached to it okay you cannot remove the cord but the other end of the cord does not have like a regular wall socket plug it has a usb cord so you're definitely going to need one of these usb blocks it does not come with one it only comes with the things that i showed you which is the two tripods the actual ring light and the actual mobile clip so you will need to purchase one of these so what i noticed when i did do the original video for this like you know unboxing because i will post that up on youtube is that you know what I'm saying i used my usb charger port um i use my samsung galaxy one which is a fast charger and it's a really good charger i use that and it got to its really full potential brightness the next day i tried to use it for my makeup and i used one of these that i purchased at the dollar tree the the brightness when you use when you use really cheap ones like from the dollar tree the brightness is going to be low it's not going to be this bright and it's not even the brightness this is the brightness right here that it can get. This is the full potential brightness. But if you're using like really a really cheap one of these, then it's not going to get this bright. It's going to be like, this is going to be the brightness right here. This will be the brightness of it, which is really not much. You know what I'm saying? But it is somewhat better. See, I turned it off and I turned it back on. So this is the full brightness you'll get if you use a cheap um, power USB power source block. So I just want to let you guys know beforehand, do not use a cheap one use a good a good one because it has to do with the voltage and you'll get the maximum 
you know, wear out of it or the maximum usage out of it when you use a good one. So that's all I wanted to tell you guys. I wanted to share that with you guys down below. I'll post the information. I do have another one that I will show you guys. This is a bigger one. But yeah, these ring lights are really inexpensive and I like this one a lot because like, look, it's giving me good light. This is good for makeup tutorials if you do some uh, and all that good stuff. So I will definitely post their information below for you guys so that you can check it out. Also, in case you guys are wondering about the wig that I got on today, I will have the video up soon. This is a wig by West Kiss Hair. You know, I fucks with them. I always fucks with them. They have like the best whisk, uh, the best bundle hair. And this is the second wig that I've ever got for them. And every last one of them have been like amazing. All the hair that I've ever received from them is really good hair. And I think I've worked with them about eight times. But anyway, we're going to get onto this real talk because it's super duper long. You know what I'm saying? It's really, really long. And I don't want to hold you guys up for too much longer. You know what I'm saying? So I will definitely link all of the information for all of the products that I did show in this video down below. So on that note, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk issue that you would like for me to embark on, talk about, and spread lies and rumors about, which I'm just joking. You can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Be sure to put in the subject line, real talk, bitches. And if you want to change the name of those who you are speaking about, like if you're really talking about me, bitch. You can go ahead and change the name. Okay, let me know that. And if you didn't change the name, you forgot to. 99.9% .9 of the time, baby daddy, I'm going to change it for you. So all of my information, including my email for Real Talk, will be down below. I love you guys. Let's get into this Real Talk. You know what I'm saying? Because this one is long. She didn't send me two emails. Okay? Yes. Huh? 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 What? Hi, April. I have been watching your channel for some time and I love your advice. You're honest and you're a mother. I'm so happy for you as well. I'm glad your husband is home with you. You seem really happy, but I need some of your real talk. This situation is a long one, so I'll start from scratch. I moved from Florida to Alabama. Um, can you please change the names? Anyway, we're going to call her Stephanie. I moved here to get away from that Florida life and provide better for my children. So I decided to go to nursing school and I graduated and I'm a nurse now. And I just graduated in December. Nursing school is long and tedious and you have to pretty much love and devote your life to it. I was barely making any money. I worked part-time in a clothing store. Me and my boyfriend was going through a lot and we ended up breaking up. Why we broke up was because he kept losing his jobs and became really depressed. Now, mind you, I have no family here and I had nowhere to go. I had to stay at my ex-boyfriend's brother's apartment or place. Um, his name is, we're going to call him Ed. His name is Ed. I had a friend, but she was staying with her sister, so I couldn't stay with her. So that's how I ended up staying at Ed's place for only two nights, which is my ex-boyfriend's brother. Ed has an 11-year-old daughter who is now 13, and he was going through a divorce, a divorce. Ed was going through a divorce, but my daughter was babysitting his daughter to earn extra cash for school clothes. My daughter was 14 when she started going over there just to babysit. Anyway, this is my second night staying over at Ed's place, and the grandmother was watching his little girl, which is Ed's daughter. I was doing my homework, and out of nowhere, the grandmother just dropped Ed's daughter off and doesn't even say anything to me, so I was kind of concerned. I felt like you just don't drop off a kid at a stranger or with a stranger and don't even at least say something to that person or inquire who they are. So I told my daughter... How I felt about it and she was 15 or 16 years old at the time as I was speaking with her about the situation regarding the grandmother just dropping the child off either way I was really upset about it so she proceeded to, so my daughter proceeded to call Ed and tell him that I was upset I was not there when my daughter spoke to Ed on the phone, so I have no idea what she had told him. Now, this man gets off of work at 6, I believe. I'm not really too sure. He's been missing in action and didn't get back to his place until after 11 p.m. Ed comes in drunk, and he's yelling at me and asking me about his daughter being dropped off. And I told him that I'm not his girlfriend, I'm not his wife, and I shouldn't have to call you and wonder where you are and what you're doing and tell you what's going on with your own child. Then Ed proceeds to pick on my son and I was just pissed off and I couldn't do anything about it because my mother taught me never to argue with a drunk person. So I didn't. I just sat there and I cried and I felt stupid and I got myself into another bad situation. Ed didn't speak to um 
Ed was acting weird after that, and he was mad because I didn't speak to him for those two days. I didn't feel comfortable staying there as is, and I wanted to make it clear that I was never interested in him, and it was just a friend helping out a friend because his family was questioning me about him asking whether we were messing around. And no, we was not messing around. I don't know what Ed was saying to his family to make them even ask me those questions, so I made sure I kept my distance. But the next day, I moved back in with my ex-boyfriend because I'm not living with someone one who is like that acting weird and getting drunk and making me feel uncomfortable and yelling in my son's face was just something that I don't care for and my ex was kind of talking and and working things out but and me and my ex was kind of speaking with one another and working things out but I ended up moving out anyway and I got my own place and when Ed had found out I got my own place he called me and was lecturing me about his brother Michael I changed names Ed had found out through a friend that Michael was going to ask to marry me, which I didn't know anything about. Anyway, Ed was lecturing me and telling me I shouldn't go back. And if I did go back, our friendship was going to be over. Pretty much telling me what to do. And he was just acting weird, really weird. He had asked me a question like, so what's up? And to me, that means, are we going to mess around or get together? And I just told him, you're acting weird and I'm not, and I'm going to get off the phone. I told Ed that he should not be concerned about me and Michael and he should get the hint that I have not spoken to him in a couple of weeks. So just don't call me anymore. And that's that. So my daughter was not going back over to Ed's place anymore because I felt like he overstepped his boundaries with me and wants me and Michael and once me and Michael started to try to work things out. I never told him and how I never told him and I once me and Michael started working things out, I never told him how his brother was acting weird and some of the things that made me feel uncomfortable. I just told him that I'll never go back over to his brother's house and chill with him because he has issues. So I left it alone, not trying to look into the situation too much, but I still wanted to keep my distance from um, Ed. So one night, my boyfriend, Michael, wanted to make to take me out and we wanted to go hit some clubs and we ended up inviting Ed his brother, which I thought was a bad idea, but cool. You know, that's your brother. So we ended up, you know, hanging out and chilling and Ed, Michael, my boyfriend and his brother, Ed was drinking the whole night and me and Michael was not drinking that much. What? Hold on. Okay. So she said, so we was hanging out and chilling with Michael's brother, Ed, which who was drinking the whole night. So Ed was the one who was drinking the whole night. Me and my boyfriend, Michael, we weren't drinking that much. We were sober. And Ed was trying to convince his brother to let him drive, but he wouldn't. He was falling asleep at the wheel and swerving, and Michael kept waking him up. Things went from, from bad to worse. And my and Ed pulled a... Hold up. This is, things went from bad to worse, and Ed pulled a gun out on my boyfriend, his own brother. I was scared and didn't know what to do and say, so I just hoped and prayed that we got home safe. Ever since that day, we just have not been communicating with Ed anymore. I also thought in the back of my mind that Ed was jealous of Michael because all Ed does is talk bad about his own brother and never says anything good. When Michael was down and out and didn't have a job, he pretty much asked his brother to loan him some money so that I wouldn't be paying the bills all by myself. And Michael had his truck paid off. And also Michael asked his brother if he could take the truck and hold on to it for him and he'll pay him back and get the truck back. But Ed ended up fixing my boyfriend's truck just to sell it and gave my boyfriend a truck that pretty much needed more repairs. He did my boyfriend pretty dirty. My boyfriend looked up to his brother at one point and said things about his brother. My boyfriend looked up to his brother at one point. So I was wondering what was going on and why was my boyfriend who looked up to his own brother just being so nasty? Worded a little bit messed up. So I was wondering what was going on and why my, my boyfriend Michael looked up to his brother Phil and why was Phil being so nasty about his brother? Things had gotten so bad between the, them two that my boyfriend was starting to say bad things about his own brother too warning me to stay away from him. They even got into a physical altercation. Um, my boyfriend, Michael, does not have children and 
um, he's never married a woman who has left him. Now, on the other hand, Ed's wife left him with their daughter to raise by himself. She was on drugs and running up and down in the streets. Things with my boyfriend's brother was really bad. Ed had not only tried to get with me on the low, but tried to go out to, um, but tried to go out to, a. Uh, Ed had not only tried to get with me on the low, but he also tried to go out with two of my close friends, my ex-girlfriends when they were, um, um, yeah. Okay. So he tried to go out with one of her, her close friends. Okay. He seemed like he was Captain Saberho playing that type of role when nobody asked him to be. He seemed really nice at first. He changed my tire and taught my son how to change an oil in the cars. He loaned me some money, but I paid that back. He was just really just a good father and a friend, so it seemed. Okay, we're still talking about Ed, the brother. All right, so it's been two years since I have not spoken or seen Ed, my brother's boyfriend. Excuse me, my boyfriend's brother. My daughter a month ago, which I just found out all of the news, and I'm about to tell you, she told me that she was pregnant and it was from a boy at school. And the little boy had ditched her and moved with his mom. And the mother didn't know who um, who my daughter was. I felt so bad for her. And me and my boyfriend was going to investigate and find out who this little boy was. So I told my daughter that we was going to investigate and find out who this little boy was so that his mother can know what was going on. My daughter is 17 years old now, and I felt like I I know I had her young. I know how it is to raise children by yourself. I'm 34. Now, I didn't want her to go through like um the same things like I had to. But come to find out she's pregnant. Come to find out my daughter is pregnant from my boyfriend's brother, Ed. I was so heartbroken. I had told her a long time ago she was not allowed to go back over there anymore. And I told her why she was not allowed to go back over there. He was acting as if he liked me being disrespectful and trying to tell me what to do and talking to my daughter like she was an adult and telling her about adult things. I popped up on my daughter when she was babysitting at Ed's place to see what she was doing. She was sitting on the couch with short shorts, really short shorts and a t-shirt. I told her she should not be sitting over here like this and to put on some decent clothes. And Ed was supposed to be at work, but he answered the door. He claimed um, that he had just gotten off of work. I didn't even think he would be interested in my daughter, my baby. There would never be a reason to not trust him. He has a daughter of his own, and he is very protective of his own daughter. So I just didn't think anything of it. So my daughter kept going over there until the situation happened, still thinking to negative, still still thinking nothing too negative about Ed. But this whole time for the past two years, maybe four, maybe before that, he'd been buying my daughter things that I could not afford at the time. He bought her an iPhone, clothes, sneakers. He was picking her up from school in his nice car, doing doing this behind my back. He was continuing on acting as if I never told him that my daughter was not allowed to go back over to his home. I was upset and I had left to go and get away from everything. I didn't want to be angry and take it out on my daughter, so I went over to my boyfriend's home. I asked, I had to take, <clears throat> I went over to my boyfriend's house. I had, I had took away my daughter's phone, but she continued on having her laptop because she needed to do her schoolwork, and she still had a whole another year of school left. She's only in the 11th grade. My son is 16 now, and he was keeping an eye on my daughter, so somehow she found a way to text on her laptop, and my son had her phone, so her Gmail is connected to her phone, and that's how my son found out that she was texting somebody. So he went into her room and asked her what she was doing and she was lying and she said she was texting a friend and my son proceeded to ask her, let me see your laptop and come to find out she was texting Ed, my boyfriend's brother. She started acting like a crazy woman and jumping all over my son. So they were fighting and my son had to push her off of him. My son is bigger than me and bigger than my daughter. Oh, excuse me. And my daughter is bigger than me. So, so that's. Oh, so that she would stop breaking her laptop. 
so that she would stop bringing her laptop and he ran downstairs and called me. So I came home and I slapped her in the face and told her, this is not a joke. You need to stop lying and tell the truth. And somehow she got a hold of, of Ed and Ed called the police on me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Somehow she got a hold of Ed, my boyfriend's brother, and my boyfriend's brother called the police on me and said that I was abusing my daughter and that she was not, and that was not true. So my daughter ended up staying at her friend's house and Ed found, and he, and Ed found out where my daughter was and he brought her another iPhone because I smashed the other one that he brought her originally. And she lied and told me that it was her friend's phone, but come to find out, Ed had been had been bought her a phone. She didn't need a phone. My boyfriend bought um wait, wait, she didn't need a phone. Okay. Okay. It may not have been an iPhone, but it was an Android. She had a phone already that they didn't know about. I was at work when the police came to my home. They told me that she had been had physical evidence that I was being abusive to my daughter and I had to leave my first nursing job and to find out what was going on. And they told me at the police station that I was being charged with criminal abuse charges and they had evidence that I was doing all of this stuff to my daughter, but it was not true. And my daughter had to go to a safe house. And while we was in there talking and while I, we was in there talking to DHR, she proceeded to talk about my fiance, my boyfriend, Michael, and saying things that I didn't even know. She had a problem with my fiance, my daughter, and she proceeded to say that we don't want you with your boyfriend. We feel like he's going to use you with all your money. I'm not really sure what's going on. Okay. My boyfriend is not my kid's dad. He is um, If he has raised them for about, he has raised them for about seven years now. So I was really surprised that my daughter was acting like this because I thought that we were on good terms and that they was, you know, they had a good relationship. I thought that we, um, I thought that we had grown stronger as a mother and daughter, especially as a mother and daughter relationship. Me and her did everything together. She was like my best friend, but in a mother and daughter type of relationship way. I was so focused on school that I didn't realize I had lost my daughter a long time ago. If anyone has been to college or has been in the nursing program, life, ch life changes. I'm almost lost my relationship with my boyfriend over school. Um, I have been so focused on school that I didn't have much time for anyone, um, really. All I thought about was just fixing me and my kids' future together as a family, thinking I was doing the right thing. So I sent my daughter away to stay with my mom, and I was just distraught. And everything that I didn't know and I didn't want her to be, um, I just was trying to fix it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to put him in jail because I had no un what? Uh, I didn't want her to be here. I didn't want my daughter to be here. I wanted to try and put him, I wanted to try and put him in jail because I had to unregister her from school. And I spoke to the teachers to see if they noticed anything odd about my daughter. They had told me that my daughter had told them that she was pregnant back in February and it's April now. And she had told them that her and her, her now boyfriend had been together since she was 14 years old, off and on. The teachers at her school were trying to get her to tell me who it was, who her baby father was, how old he was, but she would never say who it was. She kept lying about his age and said that he was homeschooled and he was a teenager and his name was Mike. That's the name that she told them, but she was, um, but she told him it was a boy at school. It was just a bunch of lies that this girl, my daughter, was saying, which is astonishing to me. The teachers at school, which is going to press charges, the teachers, the t um, the teachers at school, which are going to press charges and try to get him to go to jail. But she kept lying and saying things that just didn't add up. They thought that she was being abused and acting funny and not being the, not acting the way she normally does, the child that they know. Okay. So Ed, my boyfriend's brother, this man is 36 years old. My daughter had been lying to me this whole time because I was so focused on school that I thought I could trust her. Nursing school in time is time consuming and a lot of hard work. So I was being nosy enough in her life. So I wasn't being nosy enough in her life. I was trying to get my life together so that I would make a better life for my kids. I don't know what else to do as a parent. I have done everything I possibly Recently, can. My son told me that um, if he was a girl, uh, he doesn't want to have anything to do with my daughter because she just keeps lying and blaming me and my boyfriend. My son told me that if he was a girl, he would fight her. And I just don't know what to do as a parent because I don't want her to ever stay with me again. 
I could have lost everything, including my place, my apartment, because I live in a place where there can't be abuse and violent behavior. And I could have lost my nursing license because you can't go to jail for abuse. And I expect and expect to keep your nursing license. I just need to ask your opinion or advice on what to do about me and my daughter's situation. She's having baby with a grown man who I did not want her around at all. And I just don't know what to do about having to be in be, I, and I just don't know what to do. I'm about to be a grandmother and I don't want to have anything to do with this. I just don't know how to feel. What should I do? She's lying to my family about why she did this. And she feels like I chose my boyfriend, Michael, over her, which is not true. He has not lived with us for more than two years. He was willing to wait for my kids to get older and move out so we can begin our lives together. Yes, we spent time together, me and my boyfriend, but only on the weekends. Throughout the week, I spent time with my kids. I even got a job just for the weekend so that me and my kids can spend more time together before they go off to college and live their own lives. But now that's not going to happen for my daughter. So I don't know what to do as a parent. I, I thought me and my daughter was close and my son thought that we was close to, and he thought he was close to his sister and come to find out it's been a lie this whole time i just don't know what to do anymore i've done all that i could have done i just need your viewers to give me some advice and even you to tell me some advice and what to do about me and my daughter's relationship because i thought i was spending more than enough time with her i was able to afford to do more things and now that i can she's not here and it's just broken my heart Thanks, April. I hope this letter finds you and well, and I hope you're willing to read my letter for Real Talk Wednesdays. I want women to really focus on their children. And I know that these things can happen when you think things are okay and they're not, um, which is true. To tell mothers to be nosy and to not fully trust their children to find out who is who and what's really going on and to never slip up and always stay on your P's and Q's. I'm sorry this email is so long, but I wanted to tell what was important. I've never had a clue, nor did my boyfriend, that his brother is a pedophile. Coming back to Alabama and being with him, and I just don't know what to do. Should I step back and leave it alone? What should I do? I have, have I have gone to the police. I have called the lawyer. I've even told DHR. It's considered consent to have sex at 16 here in Alabama. I wish I never moved here. I'm just hurt, and I feel betrayed. So that was the first letter that she sent me, okay? And then the second one, um, it was just basically an update. By the way, I forgot to mention that my daughter was on birth control. I've had the sex talk with her. So did my mom. So thanks for even reading my letter. I hope this letter finds you well and I get to see some real talk advice. So basically this was a long one and it might've seemed a little bit all over the place, but basically, um, Stephanie who has two children, um, the daughter is the oldest by a year from her son. So her daughter so basically, Stephanie has a boyfriend. She moved to Alabama from Florida because she wanted to give her children a different life. She ended up staying with her boyfriend's brother. Her and her boyfriend broke up. So she moved out of her boyfriend's place and stayed with her ex-boyfriend's brother, Ed. Ed had a daughter of his own, which was a few years younger than Stephanie's daughter. Stephanie's daughter was taking care of, you know the young lady by just babysitting her things got a little bit out of hand a little bit carried away the young lady was being dropped off by the grandmother you know what i'm saying and nothing was being said things just got a little bit out of hand okay so basically stephanie's daughter who was 16 at the time told ed who is stephanie's ex-boyfriend's brother how her mother was upset now first of all the one thing that i don't approve of is first of all Yes, we, we as parents, we do talk shit to our kids about other people sometimes. And we just complain sometimes about adult things to our children who might be teenagers. Not saying that it's a bad thing, but sometimes that's not a good thing either. So that's basically like me sitting here talking to my 16-year-old daughter, Nay, or 17, excuse me, talking to my 17-year-old daughter, Nay, about me and my husband, her father's relationship. And you know what I'm saying? Say me and my husband had a disagreement. I'm going to my daughter, Nay, about it. You know, that's that could be okay to a certain extent, but it, 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 it may not be to a certain extent. You don't really want to involve your kids, basically, in adult situations that you don't have to, okay? So, yeah, you was upset that the girl was dropped off home, you know what I'm saying, it was upset about that, that the grandmother dropped off the young lady home without acknowledging you or saying anything to you. I can understand that because me as a grandmother, 
if I rang the doorbell and some strange woman answered the door, I'm going to be like, where's my son at? Or where's her father at? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to leave there. I'm not going to leave her with you because I don't know you. Yeah, my grandchild might live here, but I don't fucking know you from a hole in the wall. So I'm not about to just leave her with you. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to find out who you are and where's her father. And if her father's not there, then you know what? I'm probably not going to leave my child with you because yeah, my grandchild might live here, but I don't know you, bitch. So I'm not about to leave you there. So I could, I definitely could understand the fact that, you know, the grandmother just dropped her off. She didn't acknowledge you. She didn't say who she was. She didn't inquire about who you were. That's not adult-like. So I can understand why you're upset. But Stephanie, you being upset, you should have took that up with the father of the child, Ed, your ex-boyfriend's brother, not with your daughter, okay? That wasn't responsible nor adult and mature to, for you to take it up with your daughter. I understand you probably was upset and you had nobody to speak with, but sometimes we have to just leave well enough alone and deal with it in a different type of manner. But sometimes we don't have the opportunity because we get upset and things might take place, so I can totally understand that. However, your daughter had no business going back to your ex-boyfriend's brother, Ed, and telling him how mad you were. So that's what kind of escalated it. And you didn't have any idea what was said. Now, you should have said something to your daughter about that. You know what I'm saying? You should have reprimanded her. You should have, you know, disciplined her for that because that was a conversation between you and her. And it wasn't her place to tell him. However, it wasn't your place to also go to your 16-year-old daughter and confide in her. Now, here's the thing where it becomes an issue. Now I see why your daughter, Stephanie, went to Ed and told him that you were mad that his mother dropped off his daughter without acknowledging you. She got upset that you were upset about her boyfriend's daughter. You didn't know that her, your daughter and Ed were doing something that they had no business doing, okay? So she was just talking to him. That's the whole this is where this all came about. Let's get let's get past this. First of all, Stephanie ended up moving out. She took her kids and she moved out of the household um, and moved back in with her boyfriend because they got back together. Her boyfriend's brother's acting weird. We don't need to get into all of that. This is how it all boiled down to. She finds out that her daughter, her daughter is now 17, is pregnant, okay? Now, mind you, she's 34. She had her daughter when she was 17, okay? the same age. She don't want to see her daughter going through all of this. She don't want to see her daughter struggling. Who wants to see their kid struggling? She want to find out who this baby daddy is. Daughter's lying. Little girl's lying. She's lying to her mom about who the baby father is. You know what I'm saying? She want to know. They come to find out that the baby father is a grown ass man, a whole grown ass man who's 36 years old now at the time. Okay. 36 years old now at the time. And he's been fucking with her for God knows how long. Stephanie done told her boyfriend, like, yo, my daughter is pregnant by your brother, okay? The little girl is blaming her mom for this shit. She's blaming her mom's boyfriend, which is her baby daddy's brother. She's telling lies. Her mom is being arrested. Her mom is being questioned by the police. Her mom is probably being questioned by the department of, she said DHR, but I think that's like children, family services. Her mother's being questioned by all type of people because this little girl is pregnant by a grown ass, a whole grown ass man. She don't know what to do. She can lose her nursing license. She can go to jail. She can lose everything that she's worked hard for. She doesn't even want to be bothered with the girl like that anymore. She don't want the girl coming around her. She don't want the girl living with her. She just wants the girl to acknowledge and be real about the shit. Her son don't want the girl coming around her. Her son don't want to be bothered with his own sister. You know what I'm saying? It's like this big ordeal and she don't know what to do. She don't know what to do as a parent. She don't know what to do as a grandmother. This all this shit is shocking and it's new to her. She don't know what the fuck to do. Okay. I I, I could I could I could somewhat understand where she's coming from, but then I can't really because me as a parent, let's just get to this part. This all boils down to some nasty ass old motherfucking man who's a pedophile and preys on young girls. That's what this all boils down to. What the fuck I would do, listen, if that were my daughter, I'd be kicking his motherfucking door in. Okay, he he his 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 door would have been got kicked the fuck in. Where is your daughter's father at? Is what I want to know. Where is your daughter's biological father at? Because I did not hear any mention of him in this email, and I think like for this type of situation, you know what I'm saying? Her real biological father needs to be involved in this shit. Um, there was no mention of him. I'm not sure if he is alive or what. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But I do feel like this, that you need to involve her real father if he's in the picture or if you have any type of communication with him.
you know? Um, I also feel like this whole ordeal and fiasco, I wouldn't really deal with my daughter, like, you know what I'm saying? On a hands-on, hands-on basis right now. Because I say this because, for one, you don't really know what she's capable of doing. She's been lying to her family. She's been lying to your family. She's been lying to her motherfucking self. She's been lying to that fucking whole grown-ass man, Ed, which is your boyfriend's brother, okay? And we know she's been lying to him. Because if she's lying to you, she's lying to the people at the school. She's lying to herself. She's lying to her brother. She's lying to her grandmother. She's just fucking lying straight out. You know what I'm saying? You don't really want to have a hands-on, hands-on type of communication with her right now because you don't know what she's capable of doing. You don't know if you come into contact with her and she makes up some big-ass ordeal story about what you've done or what you ain't do to her. You know what I'm saying? And this is like a kind of fucked up situation, but you really do need to protect yourself. Now, I get it. You know what I'm saying? That's your child and you want to protect her too. But let's be real about some shit. You can't protect nobody unless you protect it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you fucked up, your daughter is going to be fucked up. If you fucked up, your son is going to be fucked up. So the first things first, you need to make sure that Stephanie is good. Stephanie is protected before you reaching out to your daughter and you talking to her or you visiting with her. This is the things that you need to keep in mind. You need to, you have to play by play this shit. And now that you know that your daughter is lying and she's conniving and she's sneaky, you need to play by ear and you need to walk cautious like you are walking on eggshells sweetheart for real because this girl regardless of what you may think she wants to be with this man regardless of what you may think she might want to be with him because that's her, her baby father and not only that he's a grown-ass man he done manipulated brainwashed her and said all type of things that he can and will and wants to do for her and will do for her this is how they manipulate women young women these men this is how they get them okay and so now that she has been brainwashed and i know she's been brainwashed and manipulated because she's making up stories and lying on you and her own situation so this is where how far this is already gone with this grown ass man so my thing is this me personally i would have kicked in his motherfucking door but being that you know we don't want to go to jail the situation is already bad we don't want to lose what we already have accomplished we have to do this shit the legal way now i might have got my baby daddy or my husband or her biological father to whip his motherfucking ass but we still want to take this into consideration that we don't want nobody else getting in trouble we don't want nobody going to jail but that nasty ass motherfucking bastard now since he's been fucking with her okay she is now 17 it's illegal to it's legal in alabama at 16 to fuck with some grown-ass man which is ridiculous that's like absurd absurd i cannot even believe that they allow 16 year olds to fuck with grown-ass men in any fucking state that's just ridiculous however she's pregnant she's she's pregnant she's 17 and she's pregnant okay which means that hello he was fucking with her when he was 16 and hello He's been fucking with her before she was 16. So, therefore, there's got to be some type of way that you can, can, you know, bring charges on him for the allegations before the age was legal. I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Either way, that nigga need to go to jail. He need to get a beat down. Because this shit has gotten out of hand. Why would you, a 36-year-old man, want to have a baby with a 17-year-old? Like, seriously, I would be shameful of myself. Like, dead ass serious. I would be so shameful that I fucked somebody that is a teenager. Okay. If I was 21 and I had a girlfriend that was 16, I would be embarrassed because you a grown ass man at 21. Why the fuck would you want to fuck with anybody whose number ends with teen? The word teen. You know what I'm saying? 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. Why would you want to fuck with anybody whose number ends with the word teen? That's absurd. Like, come on, man. There's mad pussy out there. And you want to get some 17-year-old pussy, some 16-year-old pussy. What the fuck be wrong with people today? Like, they be on some real fucking weirdo shit. Like, for real. What I would do in this situation, sweetheart, let me tell you. Keep your job. Keep your senses. Keep you a lawyer on the side. And keep away from her. Because right now she's toxic and you don't want anybody. I don't give a fuck if it's your mama, your boyfriend, your husband, your brother. You don't want no type of toxic shit around you. Okay. When you're trying to do good for yourself and better yourself and uplift yourself, you don't need toxic shit. And family is toxic. Your children can be very toxic to you. Trust me. I know this. I've had a very, a very bad Memorial Day. Thanks to my son with his bullshit. Okay. 
He on his way out this motherfucking door. I'm, I've, I've had it. Okay, I've had it. Not to mention, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a grown-ass woman. I'm not about to tolerate no fucking dumb kitty shit up in my house, okay, with no fucking grown-ass kids. Like, you keep your head somewhere. You had to be put in your place. Like, come on, man. You had to be put in your place on a holiday, Memorial Day. Ain't nobody trying to be fucking miserable around here and be irritated by you. I'm, let me tell y'all this much. I ain't trying to be ir irritated and miserable by no motherfucking body. So that's why I said all this toxic shit. I keeps away from that, and I don't have time for that shit at all. None of it. And if your kids is being toxic to you, then unfortunately, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to leave them the fuck alone. Trust me when I tell you, when my kids get on my last motherfucking nerve and they doing some really irate, irrational, bullshit, dumb shit, and, and I'm not getting involved in this shit. You can go ahead over there with that bullshit because April ain't getting involved in it. I don't have time for it, nor do I want that shit around me. Toxic shit is not good for you, especially when you're trying to come up in the world. You're trying to level up, all right? Bitches, level the fuck up. Regardless of what it is, level the fuck up because your kids is toxic sometimes too, and we're going to have to level up on them. I understand where she's coming from with this whole situation. We need to be more aware of what our children are doing, and you're right. I feel like this. Social media and all of this shit has gotten out of control and it allows our children to wander off into some fucking wonderland, some fucking la la land that they have no clue about. You know what I'm saying? And it's sad because this is the truth. This internet shit, the social media shit, I've been told y'all, be having our kids tripping. They feel like they know everything. They feel like they can do everything. They just feel like they on top of the motherfucking world. And then we have these fucking weirdos who want to fucking brainwash and manipulate them and stray them along. You know what I'm saying? Which is ridiculous. And I feel like if it were me, I don't know. You know, sometimes I think like out of the box, irrational. Sometimes I don't even think and I just go off of just like anger. And I think like that situation, if I was to find out that one of my kids were pregnant at 17, okay, I get that mistakes happen. But if I was to find out that they were pregnant from some 36 year old man, oh my God, a bitch is about to be driving off in her truck and I'm going to probably run your ass over if you outside or I'm going to crash into your motherfucking front door. Either way, nigga, you're going to get the shit. You gonna catch these? You gonna catch this? You gonna catch this serious ass whooping? But that's not the mature thing to do. And unfortunately, it's so fucked up to feel that way. Like, damn, I wanna fuck this person up real bad. I wanna hurt them, but because they did some some nasty foul shit to my kid, but I can't because the law. There's a law. That's a fucked up feeling that you can't do something to somebody who has physically harmed and violated your kids because of the law. I mean, yeah, the law is put there for good reasons, so I give them that, but it's just a fucked up feeling as an individual because as a person, you want to protect your children and you want to make sure that they always okay and you want to just make sure that you there for them and you want to make sure that you instill values and common sense and knowledge into them. And then here you got some nasty motherfucking weirdo who wants to come and take your baby and take all of that from you. So that gets you furious inside and you feel to the point where you just, your head want to pop and you just ready to bash their shit in. I understand how that feels. I mean, I don't understand how that feels, but I understand where you're coming from because I am a mother of five children. And if it were me, I would have fucking hurt you so bad right now. I can't even say this on camera, but trust me, if you was to fucking violate my kids in some type of, any type of way, I'm coming for you. But there is the law. So sometimes we have to sit back and fall back. And unfortunately in this situation, Stephanie, you're going to have to sit back and fall back. Okay. This is what I would do. I wouldn't discuss this situation with my boyfriend anymore, only because that's his brother. And regardless at the end of the day, that's his brother and they are blood. And regardless at the end of the day, you are his fiance or his girlfriend. You have no relationship ties to him except for the fact that you're his girlfriend. Okay. Now, the reason why I say don't discuss this situation with him anymore is because for one, your boyfriend may start feeling a little bit you know, he might feel a little sympathy for his brother after a while if he knows how much trouble he's going to get into. He might feel a little bit of sympathy for the family as he doesn't want his name, his family's name to be shamed. You know what I'm saying? He might go back and tell his brother, yo, this is what's been going on. This is what she's going to do. You know what I'm saying? The only person that you can trust in this situation is yourself. Is yourself and maybe even your lawyer. But as far as your boyfriend, 
I would not communicate with him the situation of any type of case or anything that's going on with my daughter. Only because this is still his brother at the end of the day. This is still his family, okay? And even if you guys are still together, that's fine. Your boyfriend didn't violate. Your boyfriend didn't do anything. He told you not to go over there. He he warned you about his brother. Uh, well, somewhat, you know what I'm saying? He knows his brother's acting weird. That's fine. You you. It's not like you have to end your relationship with your boyfriend. However, I do feel like any type of information that you have regarding this situation with your daughter should be kept to yourself. You don't need any type of information leaking out and fucking up what you got going on. Now, if you living with him still and it works out for you guys, that's great. You know what I'm saying? But I just feel like some things need to be kept to ourselves. Okay. And this pertains to your daughter. You know what I'm saying? This pertains to you. This pertains to your family. This pertains to your livelihood. I think like some things are better kept to ourselves or within my media family. And being that you guys have a long, you know, involvement with one another, that's great. But this situation still involves him because this is his brother. So I feel like, you know what I'm saying? As long as he's not threatened and it's not fucking up him, then I think that you really need to consider keeping this shit to yourself and dealing with it the best way you can. As far as communicating with your daughter, you know, maybe call once in a blue. Hey, how are you? I'll just call and check on you. Don't talk about too much because you don't want to put your foot in your mouth. You know what I'm saying? You want to see how this pans out. As a grandmother, regardless of what, you're going to love your grandchild regardless of what. You're very angry and you're very hurt right now about your daughter. And I can totally understand that, okay? I understand that shit. All right. I totally understand that because as a parent, we do get upset. We do. We are hurt. My daughter was 17 when she got pregnant, too. I was 17 when I got pregnant. OK, with my first one. All right. And I had him when I turned 18 and my daughter had my grandson when she turned 18. So I understand that, you know, mistakes happen in life. And as a parent, we sometimes end up blaming ourselves for the choices that our children may make. But you have to realize as long as you did what you were supposed to do as a parent and you instill good values and you instill, you know what I'm saying, knowledge into your kids and you instill to them how it is and being responsible, I don't think that you should keep blaming yourself. If you've spent time with your kids and you've done everything as a parent should, you cannot continuously blame yourself because regardless of what, they're going to do what the fuck they want to do. Okay, let's keep that shit real. I got five motherfucking kids. How you think? Let me tell you this much. We're going to use my son that just pissed me off yesterday for Memorial Day. Okay. I done told that motherfucker on a million occasions, stop fucking drinking. Okay. He not even 21. He'll be 21 next month in June. I done told him on a million occasions, don't come up in my motherfucking house with that shit. Don't come up in my house with no, no liquor. Don't come up in my motherfucking house drunk. I done told him he done got arrested for the shit and I done bailed him out. I done told him several things, not even with that, just in general and life in general. But regardless of what I've told him, he's gotten in trouble again after that. So regardless of what you do, they're going to do what the fuck they want to do. Okay. I have situations going on in my own life with my kids and I have cried to my husband about the shit that they have gone through and they have done to themselves. And I have blamed myself and my husband had to tell me the same way I'm telling you. You did everything you were supposed to. We did everything we were supposed to for them kids. We have fucking given them responsibilities. We have done what we are supposed to do as parents. Regardless of what you tell them, they're going to do what the fuck they want to do, regardless of what the age is. If I tell my 16-year-old daughter, my 17-year-old daughter, don't go to school fucking cursing, don't be fucking cursing, you know she's going to go to school cursing. I didn't see little curse things on her Instagram. I had to say shit about it. So regardless of what you tell them, they're going to do what the fuck they want to do. All right. But we cannot kick ourselves down with I tried. I've taken I've taken jobs on the weekends just to spend more time with them. Stop kicking yourself down because sometimes we do too much for their asses and they take that shit as advantage too, and they feel like they are entitled to shit. Just like your daughter right now feels like she's entitled. She's entitled to belittle you. She's entitled to being sneaky. She feels like she's entitled to whatever she's fucking doing. She feels like she's entitled to that shit. And the only one that she's going to blame is you because she's not ready for this shit. So as a parent, 
Stop kicking yourselves down because you did everything that you were supposed to do. Now here's your time to allow you to grow. The more attention that you give to this situation with your daughter and plead with her and try to talk to her, the more she's going to fucking prolong it and she's going to drag your ass with the shit. You know what I'm saying? She's she's with the shits right now. She's going to drag you with the shits right now. So me personally, just to protect you and your son, I will keep away from her. You can call her from time to time. Maybe even record your conversations if you can with her. Hey, how you doing? I just wanted to know how the pregnancy is going along. Do you need anything for the baby? Do you need anything for you? You know what I'm saying? Are you hungry? Limit yourself and just be on your P's and Q's. That's all. Limit yourself because trust me when I tell you, you don't want to lose anything, not over some foolish shit that your kids done did. Because if you lose everything that you worked hard for, you are going to really be, you're going to really be upset and you're going to really regret it. So sometimes, yes, we have to back away. We have to step away because these kids act like they grown. They think they know every fucking thing when they don't know half of the shit that we fucking know. I say this shit all the time because I get tired of these motherfuckers who always think that they know everything, especially when it comes to kids or my kids. Stop trying to tell me that y'all just invented this shit. Nigga, we been done did all of this shit already. This is the shit that I be talking about with these young kids. They swear they know shit. They swear they know everything. And then it's when you constantly telling them, oh, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that, they still going to do the shit anyway. So you know what? This is what I've done lately. Been doing. I stepped the fuck back. You want to go ahead and act stupid out there in the street? Go right ahead. But I, I tell you what, don't motherfucking call me when your ass is in trouble because I'm not even bothering to bail you out no more. You already out on bail, nigga. So go ahead and get in trouble like I told him yesterday. Go ahead and get in trouble and go ahead outside with that bullshit and get in trouble. Your bail will be revoked and I'll be getting all my money right back in my pocket and I ain't got to wait for your case to be the fuck over. So go ahead. And then I'll be headache free. I ain't got to have you up in my face. Go ahead with that bullshit. Sometimes you have to write people off, for real. You got to write the motherfuckers off. Because if you don't, bitch, trust me, the motherfucking kids will have you running around here thinking you don't know whether to wind your, um, look, you don't know, you don't, the kids will have you so fucked up and so fucking confused and conflicted with shit and so distraught sometimes, you don't know whether to scratch your watch or wind your fucking butt. You know what I'm saying? Like on real shit. You don't know what the fuck to do. Don't let these motherfucking kids drive you crazy. They get their shit. They get themselves in shit. That's the fucked up part about it. They get themselves in some shit sometimes and they always expect you to save they ass, okay? But here's the thing. I can't save you if you're going to constantly be lying about the shit. You either going to get it together or you're not going to get it together. And sometimes, listen, you either going to sink or swim, bitch. You either going to sink or swim. So here's the time when you're going to have to allow your daughter to either prove herself and either she's going to sink or swim. But I guarantee you, Stephanie, stay far clear from the bullshit. Do not share your information with your boyfriend. Tell your daughter, check on her. Hey, how you doing? Don't discuss none of this shit. Don't talk about none of this shit no more with her because she's already spreading lies and rumors about you and you need to protect your neck. Protect, protect that shit, bitch. Protect it. Protect that shit. Other divas, give her some advice. Y'all already know what time it is. I do apologize if I was like skipping through, but you know what I'm saying? Um, I have some things that was kind of like conflicted me in the email, but we got through this. So I love you. Stay diva and diva delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. And all of that information will be down below. I got to go. Uh, uh,